Welcome back to this module on arrays. In this part, we'll cover multidimensional arrays. Up till now, you've only dealt with one-dimensional arrays. Dimension here refers to the fact that elements go in one direction or row. Most programming languages allow you to define arrays with more than one dimension. For example, two-dimensional arrays can be thought of as having both rows and columns, which models tabular or table data, or matrices. You can also have three-dimensional arrays, which have rows, columns, and sometimes referred to as lanes for the third dimension, or three dimensions like a cube, or three-dimensional Euclidean space. Of course, you can continue to generalize this in any dimension that you want. But if you find yourself doing this, really rethink what you're doing. There's probably a better solution. For our purposes, we'll focus on two-dimensional arrays. The way that we've been using one-dimensional arrays is with pointers. We can use a double pointer, or more accurately, a pointer to a pointer, to point to a two-dimensional array. Technically, this double pointer points to an array of pointers. And each pointer in that array points to an array of integers. Let's take a look at a demonstration. This code snippet creates a 10 by 10 integer matrix. So there are 10 rows and 10 columns. Line 2 creates an integer pointer pointer. Line 3 initializes the array of pointers. It calls malloc and allocates enough bytes for 10 integer pointers. Note that in the size of macro, we're using int star to determine how many bytes an integer pointer takes, because it could be and likely is different than a regular integer. In the for loop, each row is set up with a normal call to malloc for an array of 10 integers. Let's visualize this code snippet. Line 2 sets up our pointer pointer. Line 3 initializes the array of pointers, which are indexed normally with 0 through n minus 1. However, instead of a normal integer, these are integer pointers. As we loop through, malloc initializes an array of n integers. In the final loop, the last row is initialized, and we now have an n by n matrix of integers. Once we've created our matrix, we can access individual elements using two indices. Normally, the two indices have a row column interpretation so that the matrix of ij accesses the element in the ith row and the jth column. To iterate over elements, you can use two for loops. The outer for loop is used to iterate over each row, and the inner for loop iterates over each column in that row. The same care and bookkeeping needs to take place to ensure that you do not access elements that are out of bounds. Let's see a live demonstration here. Here I'm creating a much smaller matrix, a 3 by 3 matrix. The matrix is allocated, creating three integer pointers. As we iterate through, a new row is allocated for each pointer. Now we can iterate for each row and each column in that row. For the second row, and the third. Each pointer in the array of pointers is pointing to a completely different memory location. There's no guarantee on how these are actually being allocated. They could be in completely different memory locations. We'll look at an alternative solution later. Memory management is very similar with two-dimensional arrays, but special care must be taken to ensure a proper cleanup. We cannot simply free the double pointer as is. This would lead to a severe memory leak. Let's edit this code to free up the matrix improperly. Now, free matrix is going to free up the array of pointers, but the three rows of integers are now lost to us, causing a memory leak. The proper way of doing this is to free up each row before you free up the array of pointers. 
This is essentially working in reverse of how they were created. Let's edit this code again to do it properly. Now, once we're done using it, we can free up each row. And now we have no memory leaks. Once everything is cleaned up, we can clean up the array of pointers. As a final demonstration in this video, I'm going to show you an alternative way of doing this. Here I'm creating a five by three integer matrix, but I'm doing so so that instead of separate rows in separate memory locations, all of the integers are allocated in one big chunk of memory. This involves still creating an array of integer pointers. But instead of a loop that creates each row independently, we make one call to malloc to create an n by m integer array, or an array of size 15. Now we still need to set up all of these other pointers. The first pointer points to zero. The second pointer will need to point to the fourth element, and so on. This is just done through some clever pointer arithmetic. After we've done this, we can treat it like a regular two-dimensional array. Which technique should you use? It really depends on what you're doing and your application. Sometimes it's better if chunks of memory are broken up. Sometimes it's better if they're contiguous.